Alright guys, it is a gray, smoky, and windy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. I think it is Tuesday, August 10th or August 11th, 2021, and so because of the wind across the microphone, the little dog and I are taking shelter in the Sancho Sheraton Tiny House uh, out here today. So of course, Yesterday was, you know, the long-awaited moment of, uh, you know, that newest doomsday report, the code red for humanity uh, being released by the UN, you know, the IPCC report talking about how doomed we are and whatnot, the newest doomsday report, and... I'm just trying to decide how much of my hot air I'm going to give to this uh, because I'm pretty sure it's being pretty well discussed elsewhere in the Doomosphere. And uh, so I'm going to go and share what uh, my favorite comment talking about the report that I have found so far. Uh, was actually made by someone who had not yet read the report. And that would be our old friend, that little lefty, Caitlin Johnstone. So I'm going to get to her comments about the report. She did not need to read the report to make the most uh, intelligent comment I've heard. But before we do, I just want to do a, have a, uh, little, 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 make a quick nod to our Alert Tribes member, Andy the Gardener, uh, for I, I'm sure Andy the Gardener will have a, a uh, his own uh, review of the, the Code Red for Humanity report. But this is Andy the Gardener's uh, comment to my rant yesterday about black swan events. You know, is the ongoing collapse of the planet, a black swan event, and this was his response with so far 10 thumbs up. Take it away, Andy. <clears throat> Ice melting when temperatures go up is not a black swan event. It is a physical inevitability that was foreseen by millions of humans and ignored, as they and everybody who could not give a fuck went about their normy lives. It is as dumb as jumping off a tall building and saying it's a black swan event when you go splat. Thank you, Andy the Gardener, one more time for your incisive uh, <laughs> summation of black, of, of, of any uh, climate tipping point being called a black swan event when anybody with a brain paying one half a bit of attention could have called any of this stuff. But anyway, we're not here to talk about black swans. We're here to talk about, which may or may not be the latest, the, the other form of BS, and that is this, um, and that is this uh, newest doomsday code red for humanity report from the IPCC released yesterday. So uh, we're going to tune in to Caitlin Johnstone to uh, get her preview, I guess you could call it, of the Doomsday Report. Take it away, Caitlin, from yesterday. <clears throat> Quote, We all grew up watching movies about heroes saving the world from fictional threats, and now we're just sitting here watching the world die in real life or real death, I guess she should have said. During the partisan debates about the latest IPCC report, remember 
that our ecosystem is hurtling toward collapse on many other fronts besides climate change. There are many other indications of collapse besides warming. The way the debate fixates solely on temperature and carbon levels is like if someone has stage 4 cancer throughout their body and they are in a coma and their vital signs are dropping and the doctor says death is imminent and everyone is arguing over whether or not low blood pressure is necessarily a bad thing. Thank you, uh, Caitlin Johnstone, for sounding a bit like Book Hermit. Uh, so then she quotes this fellow, I'm not familiar who this is, a fellow named Ben C. Uh, at Climate Ben, this is uh, Ben's uh, advice, you, you know, uh, I guess while you're reading the latest climate change, Doom and gloom. Take it away, Ben. Remember, one, the oceans are being killed. Number two, forests will soon be gone. Number three, fertile soil is disappearing. Number four, megafauna risk extermination. I don't know why he's limiting it to megafauna. Anything bigger than a mouse is uh, risking extermination. Number five, insects are vanishing. Number six, climate chaos is inevitable. Number seven, extinction is now and number eight, plastic is in our blood. None of this is front page news. Thank you, Ben C. Back to Caitlin. <clears throat> For decades, people have been saying climate change is a hoax that is being used to set up a one world government. And all that has happened during those decades is the planet getting hotter while the powerful do nothing because ecocide is profitable. Wow. Follow the money. Stupid. Anyway, everyone who thinks climate change is a hoax being used to advance sinister agendas can relax. No actual things will be done in the name of preventing climate change. The news cycle will move on once again and everyone will forget all about it. You know how you keep saying Democrats are trying to take your guns and nothing ever happens? This is that. Yes. For generations, incremental reform has been the dominant political strategy for advancing positive change, and the only incremental reform we have seen is toward more war, more ecocide, more corruption, more exploitation, and more oppression. It is time to admit incrementalism does not work. Here is how to fight climate change by working within the system. Number one, elect corporate warmongers who promise to start moving toward sustainable energy in the next century as long as that does not inconvenience the powerful. Number two, cloth grocery bags. Number three, maybe Elon Musk will save us. And number four, don't forget, 
paper straws. Yes. Uh, our entire civilization is a bubble that is going to have to burst fairly soon. Only thing we have any degree of control over is how that bursting happens. I'm not sure how we have any control over that. Uh, so anyway, as you might have heard elsewhere uh, on the Doomosphere this morning, you know that I, I have mentioned before here how Yahoo News uh, is, has started the little uh, news bots at Yahoo News have started looking for stories that um, looking for stories that should be of interest to doomers like myself and uh, apparently anyone listening to me. So Yahoo News, despite the fact that uh, the first mention of it of the Doomsday Report came in at number 67 talking about how Joe Biden's infrastructure plan was going to save the planet from climate change. That was the one story, number 67, right up here, number one story in the Doomer Roundup on Yahoo News. Seven steps you can take now to help avert the worst climate change consequences and so since you, uh, since you can find this elsewhere on uh, the Doomosphere today, um, I, I do like the paragraph leading up to the seven steps you can take today. Yes, while it is easy to slip into climate despair, there are steps to be taken that, though insufficient, to solve the problems posed by climate change. Otherwise, meaning we'll do absolutely nothing to solve the problems posed by climate change. Attempt, attempt to keep the worst consequences at bay. Take a wild guess. Let's hear Yahoo News's big seven things you can do to save the planet from climate change. How about the big yawn, eat less meat. How about reduce food waste? Yes, do not forget to adopt those clean energy alternatives. And of course, plant a lot of trees. They are saying uh, a forest twice the size of the United States. Get out there and plant a forest twice the size of the U.S. Of course, cut down on flying. Yes. Weatherize your home. And of course, vote in politicians such as Joe Biden. Uh, who promised to save the planet from climate change through an infrastructure plan. It goes without saying they are not at Yahoo News going to touch the third rail to suggest not breeding. But anyway, I just uh, got a a note from Caitlin today. So what is Caitlin sounding like? So that is Yahoo News's. Uh, that is Yahoo News's. Newses. Yahoo News's. Uh, seven ways to save the planet. But Caitlin Johnstone this morning. This is her uh, things you can do right now to change everything. Okay, when, I'm just going to read the first two paragraphs. Whenever I talk about the fact that our world is ruled by psychopaths who have our species on a trajectory toward 
annihilation via climate collapse or nuclear war, I get people asking the very understandable question, what can we do to stop this? By which they generally mean something like, how can we collectively free our minds from the propaganda prison of manipulative dominators, can you say the Green New Deal, and use the power of our numbers to create a healthy world? Yes, we're going to use the power of 8 billion people to create a healthy world. And the answer to this question is essentially, do what you can, where you can. You are only one person, and the machine is so very powerful and so very deeply dug in, so all you can do is one person's best in each moment, seize every opportunity you can find to spread awareness and throw sand in the gears of the machine and rest assured that you have done all you can. Well, there is one more thing that Caitlin left out and that is to get out there and enjoy it while you still can. And I'm going to get out there and enjoy it by walking out to my organic garden and picking some organic lettuce and a big, uh, fat, juicy, red, organic, homegrown tomato. Come back into the house and throw some factory farmed bacon uh, into a pan and have a somewhat uh, Save the Planet BLT. Does Do my organic lettuce and tomatoes from my garden, do they cancel out the factory farmed bacon in my sandwich? Uh, this is a quandary I will think about while stuffing my face, but I highly suggest you get out there and stuff your face while you still can. Bye guys.